Hi, my name is Aurélien Giron, and in this video, I'll try to give you a deeper understanding of what entropy, cross-entropy, and KL divergence actually are. In machine learning, cross-entropy is very commonly used as a cost function when training classifiers, and so we'll see why that is. Those concepts uh, come from Claude Shannon's information theory. Shannon was an American mathematician, electrical engineer, and cryptographer. And in his 1948 paper, Mathematical Theory of Communication, he founded what is now known as information theory. The goal is to reliably and efficiently transmit a message from a sender to a recipient. In our digital age, messages are composed of bits. Of course, you know that a bit is a number that is either equal to zero or one. But not all bits are useful. Some of them are redundant, some of them are errors, and so on. So when we communicate a message, we want as much useful information as possible to get through. In Shannon's theory, to transmit one bit of information means to reduce the recipient's uncertainty by a factor of two. For example, say that the weather is completely random, with a 50-50 chance of being either sunny or rainy every day. If a weather station tells you that it's going to be rainy tomorrow, then they have actually reduced your uncertainty by a factor of two. There were two equally likely options, now there's just one. So the weather channel actually sent you a single bit of useful information. And this is true no matter how they, they encoded this information. If they encoded it as a string with five characters, each encoded on one byte, then they actually sent you a 40-bit message but they still only communicated one bit of useful information. Now, suppose the weather has actually eight possible states, all equally likely. Now, when the weather station gives you tomorrow's weather, they are dividing your uncertainty by a factor of eight, which is two to the power of three. So they sent you three bits of useful information. It's easy to find the number of bits of information that were actually communicated by computing the binary logarithm of the uncertainty reduction factor, which in this example is 8. But what if the possibilities are not equally likely? Say 75% chance sunny and 25% chance rainy. If the weather station tells you it's going to be rainy tomorrow, then your uncertainty has dropped by a factor of 4, which is 2 bits of information. The uncertainty reduction is just the inverse of the event's probability. In this case, the inverse of 25% is 4. Now the log of 1 over x is equal to minus log of x. So the equation to compute the number of bits simplifies to minus the binary log of the probability, 25%. Now if the weather station tells you it's going to be sunny tomorrow, then your uncertainty hasn't dropped much. In fact, you get just over 0.41 bits of information. So how much information are you actually going to get from the weather station on average? Well, there's a 75% chance that it will be sunny tomorrow, so that's what the weather station would tell you, and that's 0.41 bits of information. Then there's a 25% chance that it will be rainy, in which case the weather station will tell you so, and this will give you two bits of information. So on average, you will get 0.81 bits of information from the weather station every day. So what we just computed is called the entropy. It's a nice measure of how uncertain the events are. Hopefully the entropy's equation should now make complete sense. It measures the average amount of information that you get when you learn the weather each day, or more generally, the average amount of information that you get from one sample drawn from a given probability distribution, P. It tells you how unpredictable uh, that probability distribution is. If you live in the middle of a desert where it's sunny every day, on average, you won't get much information from the weather station. The entropy will be close to zero. Conversely, if the weather varies a lot, the entropy will be much larger. Okay. Now let's talk about cross-entropy. It is really quite simple. It's just the average message length. For example, if the weather station encodes each of the eight possible options using a three-bit code like this, then every message will have three bits. So the average message length will, of course, be three bits, and that's the cross-entropy. But now, suppose that you live in a sunny region, and the weather's probability distribution looks like this. Each day, there's a 35% chance of being sunny and only 1% chance of thunderstorm. 
So you can compute the entropy of this probability distribution and you will find that it is equal to 2.23 bits. So it's a shame the weather station is sending 3 bits per message on average when the weather's entropy is just 2.23 bits. In other words, on average we send 3 bits, but the recipient gets only 2.23 useful bits. We can do better. For example, let's change the code like this. We're now just using 2-bit messages for the sunny or partially sunny weather, 3 bits for the cloudy and mostly cloudy, 4 bits for light and medium rain, and 5 bits for heavy rain and thunderstorm. Note that our code is unambiguous. If you chain multiple messages, there's only one way to interpret the sequence of bits. For example, 011100 can only mean partially sunny followed by light rain. Okay, so if you compute the average number of bits that we send every day, you get 2.42 bits. That's our new and improved cross entropy. It's better than our previous 3 bits, but it's still not down to 2.23 bits. Anyway, now suppose we use the same code in a different location where the weather is reversed. It's mostly rainy. Now, if you compute the cross entropy, you will find that it is equal to 4.58 bits. Wow, that's really bad. It's roughly twice the entropy. In other words, on average, we will send 4.58 bits, but only 2.23 bits will really be useful to the recipient. We're sending twice as much information uh, per message as is necessary. This is because the code we are using makes some implicit assumptions about the weather distribution. For example, when we use a 2-bit message for sunny weather, we're implicitly assuming that it will be sunny every 4 days, 2 to the power of 2, at least on average. In other words, by using this code, we're implicitly predicting a probability of 25% for sunny weather, or else our code will not be optimal. So now it's pretty obvious that the predicted distribution Q is quite different from the true distribution P. Note that our code doesn't use messages starting with 1111, so that's why if you add up all the predicted probabilities in this example, they don't add up to 100%. Anyway, now we can express cross entropy as a function of both the true probability distribution P and the predicted probability distribution Q. As you can see, it looks pretty similar to the equation for the entropy, but instead of computing the log of the true probability, we use the log of the predicted probability, which is equal to the message length. If our predictions are perfect, that is the predicted distribution is equal to the true distribution, then the cross entropy is simply equal to the entropy. But if the distributions differ, then the cross entropy will be greater than the entropy by some number of bits. This amount by which the cross entropy exceeds the entropy is called the relative entropy, or more commonly the callback leibler divergence, or KL divergence. So in short, cross entropy is equal to the entropy plus the KL divergence. Or equivalently, the KL divergence, which is noted DKL P to Q, is equal to the cross entropy HPQ minus the entropy HP. In this particular example, the cross entropy is 4.58 bits and the entropy is 2.23 bits, so the KL divergence is 2.35 bits. Okay. Now let's use cross entropy in machine learning. Say we want to train an image classifier that will detect some animals. For each of the seven possible classes, the classifier outputs an estimated probability. This is the predicted probability distribution. Now this is a supervised learning problem, so we know the true distribution. In this example, we know that this is an image of a cute red panda, so the probability is 100% for red panda and 0% for the rest. We can use the cross entropy between these two distributions as a cost function. This is called the cross entropy loss, or simply the log loss. And it's just the equation we saw earlier, except it, use, um, it usually uses the natural logarithm rather than the binary logarithm. This doesn't change much for training since the binary log of x is just equal to the natural log of x divided by a constant, the natural log of 2. So when the labels are one hot vectors, meaning one class has a probability of 100% and the rest are zero, as is the case in this example, then the cross entropy is just the negative log of the estimated probability for the true class. So in this example, the cross entropy is minus log of 0 0.25. 
you can see that the cost will grow very large if the predicted probability for the true class is close to zero. But if the predicted probability is close to one, then the cost will be close to the true distribution's entropy, which in this case is equal to zero since it's a one-hot vector. And that's it for this short presentation of entropy, cross-entropy, and KL divergence. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, you know the drill. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and so on. If you want to learn more about machine learning, deep learning, and deep reinforcement learning, check out my book, Hands-On Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn and TensorFlow. And that's all for today. Have fun, and see you next time.